Okay, so that's Auburn. Let's go from a team that really didn't have a great draft to a team that blew it out of the water, uh, and that's LSU. Multiple first-rounders, uh, second, third-round guys. Really, out of their giant group of players that got drafted, all but two were in the first three rounds. So this is a team that... Their draft mirrors their recruiting rankings. Their draft looks like a team that you'd expect to be, you know, 11, 12 game winner in the thick of it at the end of the year. And we know what happened to LSU last year. We know what happened to Les Miles last year. Um, but this is starting to become a recurring theme in our discussions where we have a team that's that was clearly either stacked with talent or NFL GMs are just in love a little bit over enamored with the measurables of the guys coming out of there. Um, but talk about LSU in terms of um, we saw their, their results on the field last year. If you see this kind of draft, are you disappointed as an LSU fan for what you put on the field last year and what kind of outlook does it give you going forward? Well, I think the first thing to say is LSU's record at 8-4 and four wasn't fantastic, but we really weren't shocked that that was the regular season record, right? I mean, the losses to Alabama is pretty forgivable. I mean, that was a tight game. Tight loss to Florida may be questionable, but Florida, when they wanted to be, were a very good team. Same thing could be said of Auburn. Um, we... You know, actually, in our opening thing last year, said that the Wisconsin game was going to be a knife fight for LSU just simply because that was literally the worst possible matchup in the country for what LSU was and what they were trying to do. Again, kind of going back to that, Wisconsin was the third-ranked rush defense the year prior and returned everybody in the front seven. Um, when you're a pounded football team, the last thing you want to do in your opener is play an extremely veteran defense that was phenomenal against the run the year prior. So... That wasn't too surprising. Um, I think really the Auburn loss was the one bad loss in that set. I, they really should have beaten Auburn, and Auburn's record would have looked a lot different if they'd won that game. But beyond that, everything was kind of fell in the realm of predictability. That said, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot of talent. And I think you have to kind of groan a little bit if you're an LSU fan because – you know, I mean, this is one of the more talented teams they've had in terms of, you know, high level draft talent. I think after the Alabama LSU game, we walked away from that. I think both of us felt, and I know I commented on this, that I thought Duke Riley might have actually been a better player than Kendall Beckwith. You know, Beckwith got all the hype, but I really felt like Duke Riley was quietly special. And, you know, Riley did get end up getting drafted higher. But I, I think some, to some degree, little things like that are very telling that you had a guy that was actually a fantastic linebacker and you used him as sort of a, I won't say quite role player, but situational outside linebacker. Um, and I don't know that you re they really leveraged the talent the way they should have. I mean, the defense was very good and they were great through the season. Even in their losses, the defense played their hotter out. But, you know, Malachi Dupree may have been a seventh round player, but he's still a pretty solid receiver. Uh, you have a, the fourth pick in the draft at running back. Um, you have a second round pick at center. So, you know, at some level, but I mean, I mean, they were successful pounding the football. I, I really think it with LSU, it all comes down to the fact that that was a very good football team that didn't really have a great offensive identity. And most importantly, you cannot play the game of football if you don't have a quarterback. And as bad as the quarterbacks looked at times, I honestly think they were probably worse than people even realized. I think they weren't asked to do much at all, and it hit it. And, you know, again, having watched that Alabama game, and I don't know if you agree with me, but that was one of the most painful games on both sides of the ball to watch the quarterback play that I have ever seen from two, like, top ten teams. Would yeah, you agree with me on that? it's pretty amazing talking about Alabama, how every – like. LSU could have held up a sign from the sideline that said corner blitz it's coming 
and uh, Alabama had to know it was coming, and they absolutely did not possess either the quarterback or the scheme or whatever to, to adjust. And that was, I think, kind of a rookie quarterback issue. LSU, my goodness, I mean, they did nothing. It was very similar, in my opinion, to the Washington-Alabama game. Uh, and they had all the opportunities in the world to win that game. Um, and it's interesting talking about quarterback play. Um, and I know I think you had a couple more points, but I don't want to forget this. Malachi Dupree, to me, might be the most underrated seventh round pick ever. I think he's got first or second round ability but had really no production to show for it, mostly not of any fault of his own. What do you think? I, you know, I, I there's a pretty good chance I'd agree with you. Draven Doral and Malachi Dupree, from everything I ever saw, were very capable receivers. And that offense, for pretty much your entire tenure, was incapable of getting them the football. And... You know, it's not like there's been, a, you know, some sort of theoretical past history where uh, LSU has had these high-level wide receivers that it turns out were just really uh, hidden by offensive ineptitude that blow up <laughs> in the NFL. But, you know, if that was a universe we lived in, I could see, you know, I'm not saying Malachi Dupree would make strange one-handed catches. I mean, it's such a weird hypothetical in the, on the sidelines. But I, I do think that those two guys could end up being solid NFL receivers. And, you know, honestly, I, I think it's truly a case where the NFL has no film. I don't even mean, like, good film, bad film. They didn't have enough catchable passes thrown their way to make an impact, to show up on film what they can do. Uh, but to sort of wrap around it in this discussion, because, you know, we've, I think, belabored the point long enough. Seven defensive starters uh, just left this team. Five of the seven. Uh, were you know as you as you said uh, high draft picks. I mean, four of the seven were uh, first three round draft picks. So LSU loses about as much like high level talent as anybody in the country. Maybe in some ways, maybe more high level talent. Uh, you know, Alabama might have an argument with that, but um, considering the fact that I don't see their quarterback situation getting fixed, it, it's very concerning because the defense certainly did prop them up to a large degree. And the quarterback is going to completely hold back the offense, no matter what talent is around him. Uh, so the defense has to be at a very high level. And any step back, which you're likely to see defensively, is going to have some serious repercussions when it comes to the win-loss Okay, record. so I know one more thing on LSU. I know you were really high on Jamal Adams all year. I was too. Um, the fact that he was picked sixth aside, if you're looking at LSU's draft class this year, and you had to make a prediction for which one is going to have the best NFL career. Is it Jamal Adams or is it somebody else? Um, it's that's tough. I think it probably will be Jamal Adams. Um, but the the only you know oddly the one that I'm considering maybe is Tre'Davious White. I don't think Leonard Fournette's going to be as successful as Adams or White. But that's just me personally. Okay. Well, I would say that I think Leonard Fournette is going to have a good NFL career. I think his entire career has had so much hype behind it that he's going to disappoint a lot of people. And it's probably not fair to him. Yeah. I think it's one of those situations, kind of like we hear with Bama busts. You know, they only have like eight guys in the Pro Bowl every year. But when the the people who don't really follow it, in their mind, they remember Trent Richardson or they remember a one-off here or there. And in their mind, all the NFL players at Bama sends, they're all busts. Well, if you count being an NFL starter by your second year and having a seven, eight-year career as a bust – then maybe we're looking at a Leonard Fournette bust. I don't think he's going to be a Zeke Elliott or, and it's probably too early for him, but like a big time, massive MVP style running back. And I fear that anything short of that is going to be a disappointment. Is that fair? I think it is. I don't think, and I think Fournette is the sort of guy that if he'd gone to a good team, he would have been very successful. But the 
uh, and we've talked about this before, when you have big running backs, their disadvantage is they have a hard time redirecting with uh, early on, uh, you know, in, in when they get the ball because there, there's too much mass and momentum to build up. And it's hard for them to just immediately change direction and avoid a tackler in the backfield. They really need a hole. And if they get a hole and they get to the second level, their size advantage really comes into play when they're going up against linebackers and defensive backs. A 240-pound running back in the NFL is going to get tackled by a DN just like a 200-pound running back. Uh, you know, the size and strength of the defensive lineman is just too great. And sometimes the running backs can break tackles, and I get that. But to a large degree, you're not going to ever truck an NFL defensive lineman if you're an RB. You're just not going to do it. Um, and so Fournette going to the Jaguars, I think, will we'll hold him back. And it's a little bit like he said, and I think you were saying the Bama bust, the example that comes to mind to me is – Mark Ingram, who sometimes gets labeled as a bust. The kid went to the Pro Bowl. So it's not like he's been, you know, he's an NFL starter, played in the Pro Bowl, has had some injury issues. I get that. But, you know, I think, you know, I'm just not sure where the bar is set. I think Fournette will have a better career than Mark Ingram. um, But I don't know that he'll ever live up to the fourth pick in the draft sort of hype that they're building for him, as you, I think, aptly noted. 